a very good morning very good afternoon very good evening everyone thank you so much for joining today's webinar thank you so much for taking all the time from a busy schedule guys without wasting your time let's just get started today we will talk about who is big data engineer it's also known as bde you know i mean uh, what exactly this person is what are the roles and responsibilities which are r and r at the same time what do our data engineers going to do big data engineering skills and big data engineering learning path so that's all the topics that we're going to cover today uh, let's get started who is a bde who is a big data engineer now uh, first of all let's understand what are exactly are the data engineers so data engineers are the one they are those people uh, who are going to you know develop who are going to construct who are going to test and who i uh, are going to maintain so they are going to uh, you know do the entire things each and everything all together in a nutshell so your data engineers are going to help in doing a coding will help to you know i mean implement the code will help to perform a testing and will help to you know uh, perform the maintenance later on as well so that ex exactly is your bde which is big data engineer now uh, talking about what does a big data engineer is going to do you know what exactly your bde the big data engineer is going to do so your big data engineer will help you to design, develop, construct, uh, install, test, and maintain the entire complete data management uh, on the system. So it will help you to build highly scalable, robust, and fault-tolerant system. Will help to take the entire ETL. ETL means extract, transform, and load process. Will help you to ensure architecture is planned in a way that it's going to meet the business requirements. So whatever the kind of business requirements you are going to have, whatever the kind of goals that the business wants to meet, it is really going to help you on that so that your business can meet the goals the requirements uh, can be met so that is the exact uh, advantage that you're going to have in the case of bde which is big data engineer now at the same time uh, it will also help you it's not limited to this there are certain other advantages that you're going to get in this case uh, it's again not limited to this one of the other advantages that you can just track the data from various sources like you are going to have different sources from all the different sources you are going to have a data so you can just accumulate the data from a different sources you can accumulate together and at the same time once that entire data is going to be accumulated you will be able to work on that data altogether because a uh, majority of the time it happens that if you're going to have data from a different sources uh, it's not going to be supported and it's, it's going to be a bit more complicated so it is really going to help you that you will be able to combine data from various sources and once you once you have combined data from various sources you will be able to work together on all different types of data that you are going to have. So that is one of the biggest advantage that you are going to get in this case. Now, big data engineer responsibilities. What are the different responsibility of big data engineer? So what are different type of roles? What are different type of responsibilities that we are going to have for big data engineer? There are various uh, responsibilities. The first is data ingestion, wherein you will be able to, uh, you know, aggregate data from various sources, and then you are going to ingest that data so that your system eventually can uh, understand that data. Your system eventually can process the data. So that is the one thing that you are going to do. Next is data transformation, wherein you will be able to convert the data from one format to another. Now, um, like if I want to convert the data from, you know, one format to another, so that the different applications can understand, different application can work on that is something is possible and that is something which is doable the last is the performance optimization where you are going to build a scalable system with the help of which you will be able to optimize the entire performance that you are going to have now talking about big data engineer skills like what are the different type of skills that your uh, big data engineer is going to have so there are uh, different skills that your big data engineer should process. The first is the big data engineer should have um, the knowledge in operating system, should have knowledge in different type of operating system. Like uh, if I had to say, you know, like your Linux, your Windows, different type of operating system knowledge uh, your data engineer should have. Next is programming language. Now guys, one thing, I mean, you can just pick up one of the programming language. It's not like that you have to learn like, you know, 10 different languages. Now, if you know the one of the biggest thing in the case of programming language is that even though you are going to have different type of languages, you know, the logic remains same. Of course, different programming language will have different syntax, but the logic is going to remain same. Just for an example, if I want to add two numbers, if I have to add two numbers and what I will do, I am going to um, simply, uh, you know, I mean, ask the user for the first input, post that I'm going to ask the user for the second input. Once that second input is going to be provided, first input is going to be provided, I'm going to just add both the inputs all together and I'm going to store it in a third variable. 
So that is something which happens that where you're going to have the input uh, from the user. And uh, once that input is going to be provided, you are just going to have that input being available, being processed. Uh, so once you are going to have two inputs available with you, then post that, uh, I mean, you are just going to add it, store it in the third variable, and you are going to print that third variable. Now this entire thing can be implemented in different, different programming uh, languages, but the entire logic is going to remain same. So you will be able to, uh, you know, you will be able to apply the entire logic uh, the same way that uh, I have shared with you. So eventually you will be able to achieve this very easily. Next, you should have the knowledge in database like, you know, NoSQL, uh, SQL based technology, different database, um, Oracle and all. You should have a knowledge in that. You should have knowledge in big data frameworks and real time processing framework. At the same time, you should have the knowledge in uh, different tools like, you know, Pig, which is for scripting your high drill, which is for analytics, you know, MapReduce, Spark, and all such kind of uh, frameworks, which eventually you're going to learn as well. Now, one thing you have to remember uh, in this case is like, once you're going to have even uh, different type of technologies altogether, it's not like that you have to uh, gain the masters on that. Um, the entire end goal, the expectation from you is that you should have a knowledge, you know, what are the different uh, technologies they are doing? What is the advantage of having it? So, I mean, at, at the same time, your concepts have to be clear. That is the major, major, major requirement that you are going to have. Now, moving on, talking about structured learning at Edureka. Now, if you're going to take the course from us, uh, how exactly the entire journey is going to look like, how exactly you will be able to cover each and every uh, things, let's take a look. So once you're going to take an entire training from us, in the very first class, you're going to learn about big data and Hadoop. What exactly is big data? What exactly is Hadoop? What is the difference between them? Uh, you know, whether we should go with a big data or we should go with Hadoop, all such kind of things that you're going to learn and, uh, you know, again in detail with the practical hands-on. In the second class, you're going to learn about Hadoop architecture, HDFS, you know, what exactly the Hadoop architecture, uh, what is the difference between that? What is HDFS? All such kind of things in detail you are going to learn with the practical hands-on. In the third class, you are going to learn about Hadoop uh, MapReduce framework. I mean, what exactly is the Hadoop? Uh, you know, I mean, what exactly is the difference between the Hadoop MapReduce framework? So all, all such kind of things in detail you will be able to learn. In the next class, you're going to learn, uh, learn about advanced Hadoop MapReduce. What exactly that is? What is the meaning of it? What is the advantage of having um, advanced uh, Hadoop MapReduce, all such kind of things that you're going to learn in detail with the practical hands-on. In the next class, you're going to learn about Ap Apache Pig. You know, what exactly is Apache uh, Pig? What is the advantage of it? Um, you know, at which specific amount of time we should, op you know, like uh, we should use Apache or all the different one. So all such kind of things you are going to learn in detail with the practical hands-on. In the sixth class, you're going to learn about Apache Hive. What exactly is Apache Hive as well? With the practical hands-on, you will be able to learn. You know what exactly is Apache uh, High? What is at least Apache Pig? In which scenarios you have to use? In which scenarios you have to, I mean, ignore? So all such kind of things you will be able to learn with practical hands-on in detail. In the seventh class, you're going to learn about Apache Hive and Edge Base at a higher level. So you know, at the advanced level, at the higher level, you will be able to learn this. In the eighth class, you're going to learn about advanced Apache edge base, uh, you know, the different components of it, uh, like with what all components it can be integrated, all such kind of things you will be able to learn with practical hands-on in detail. In the ninth class, you're going to learn about processing distributed data with Apache Spark, you know, I mean, what are different ways with the help of which we can process uh, at the same time, how we can integrate all such kind of things you will be able to uh, learn in detail with the practical hands-on. In the last class, you're going to learn about OZ at and Hadoop project. So what exactly is, um, you know, OZ and what exactly uh, is Hadoop uh, project, how, how basically you can create a different integrations with that, how you can, uh, you know, integrate all such kind of things you're going to learn in detail with the practical hands-on. And at the end, you are going to become a superhero like this. Now, this is the big data engineer learning path, guys. Now, in order to get big data engineer learning path, you should, uh, you know, I mean, you are going to uh, start it with the programming language, then you're going to go with the DVMS SQL, then NoSQL database, then you are going to go with ETL data warehousing, big data frameworks, real time frameworks, and lastly, you're going to have it cloud. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining today's session. Wishing you a great day ahead. Bye bye. Take care.